Okay, this is going to be a uh, just a quick little introduction to Sidekit RF, uh, also known as SCURF. So this is going to be uh, in a Jupyter notebook, and so once you have that installed and running, uh, which runs out of the browser, you can install Sidekit RF, uh, assuming you have Anaconda installed with Conda uh, install dash C. Conda Forge, this is the channel Sidekit RF is on, like that. Uh, and then you control enter and it'll run it, install it, and everything. I'm not going to do that because I already have it installed. So I'll stop that cell. Okay, so let's assume that's done. Then we'll have SCURF installed and we can import it. So we'll import SCURF as RF. RF is uh, just the name I normally import it as, but you can choose a different name if you like. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is load up a quick little uh, touchstone file. Now I have one already in SCURF in the data uh, module, so I'm going to say uh, from SCURF data, which is the data module, import ring slot, which is kind of the, uh, the little test network I use usually. So if you just type ring slot on the command line, you'll see it gives you some information. It's a two port network. It's got a name which it pulls out of the uh, file name if you're loading up from a touchdown file. It's got a frequency uh, information here and then a port impedance uh, matrix. Now there's some basic attributes to networks. So one attribute is a scattering matrix. So I just hit control return there just to execute this property. Now that's a complex, uh, let's look at the shape, complex 201 by 2 by 2. So that's number of frequencies by number of ports, uh, as you'd expect. And we also have a frequency uh, property. Now this is a different object. The reason it's an object is so that we can do things with the units and uh, interpolation, things like that. But you can always access the uh, just the frequency vector there by F, or the uh, scaled. This is scaled by the unit of gigahertz for this network, for example. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can tab out uh, any object or property and see what, what's there. So here are some examples of things that are there and operators you can use. Alrighty, so the first thing, let's say we want to just look at what this uh, network looks like. So we can just plot it, uh, let's say on the Smith chart. Whoops, plot S Smith. Okay, and this is what we got. So it plots all the S parameters on the Smith chart. You can also do um, <clears throat> dB, so magnitude and dB scale. Or you can do phase, which is DEG degrees. And there's other ones uh, <clears throat> like arc length and uh, real and imaginary and things like that. There's also time, uh, time dB, let's say. That's time domain. For this network, it's really clean because it's a simulation. But just to give you an idea, um, so that's some basic stuff we can do with the ring slot. So another uh, thing we can do, let's say we, if we want to slice, so let's go back to our little decibel plot here, our magnitude plot. Let's say we just want to look at a section of the network, say from 80 to 90 gigahertz. You can do that using the brackets here. And I can do it with either uh, indices, so I'll have to know what numbers the uh, those frequencies correspond to. So let's say 100 to uh, 150. And I can plot that, and you'll see that goes from, let's say, 90 to 100 or something. But if you want to use just a human readable string, you can just put it in quotes and just put in kind of what you'd expect to write with the frequency unit if you want. And that'll just automatically find the indices and plot it for you. Alrighty, so if you also, if you want to plot just specific uh, S parameters, you can pass in arguments. So M and N are 0 and 1. Uh, this is S12, for instance. So the indices are off by 1. Um, Alrighty, so that'll give you that. So let's just say I copy ring slot. Let's look at some uh, operators. I copy, we'll call this R1. And then R2 will be the same network again. Now the reason I'm copying it is just so it doesn't mess up the original ring slot. So here R1 and R2 are just copies of the original ring slot antenna network. 
So I can cascade these together by the, the exponentiation operator in Python. So that's as if I took two networks and cascaded them, which returns a two-port network. So you can take that, and then you can, if you want to look at that, you could do that as well. You can also do other things. So if you want to divide them, that'll give you the phase difference between the two networks, because complex division is uh, phase uh, subtraction. Uh, this is the same network, sorry, so that doesn't make any sense. So we can do, let's say, R1 times R2, then divide it by R2, and that'll just give us the phase response of R1. So maybe we can look at a more practical example of uh, what you'd want to do with the de-embedding or division. So we can import something from the media module. The media module just implements basic transmission line stuff. It's not really meant to be like a circuit simulator. It's just convenient to have when you need to add a match line or something. So we can do uh, from scurf uh, import media. <clears throat> so then we can say media dot, and then we have a lot of different media types. So I'm just going to pick a free space media. So that's just basically uh, air. And then you can do a little question mark. <clears throat> and it'll give you a little readme for uh, how to construct the thing. So basically, we're just going to need uh, the frequency. So we'll take the frequency property from ring slot. And I can define this so it's more clear. All right. And then I think that's all I need. So we can try that. Uh, and maybe I'll give it a characteristic impedance of 50. I'm going to store this in FS for free space. Okay, so I just, and I can type FS, see what we got. We got a free space media. I'll close this help out. Free space media from 75 to 110 gigahertz, gigahertz with 210 points. That came from the, uh, you know, took the number of points and everything from ring slot. So then we can do FS line, let's say 90 degrees. And that'll generate a two port network, which, uh, represents the match line of 90 degrees. So let's say we want to plot this. We want to plot S21 here. I'll just show you it's 90 degrees where at midband. That's kind of how it's defined. So I can take this network. I'll call this a line. And I'll say line times ring slot. Double times ring slot. And then what that's going to do is it's going to put a tr match transmission line embedded on port 1 of ring slot. If I want to embed it on the other side, so port 2 as well, you can just add another one like that. And then we could look at that. So we'll see uh, the phase response of the ring slot has changed. If you want to compare it to the original. We can do that. And you can see that the phase changed on the uh, response there. As you'd expect. Uh, <clears throat> so that's just some basic things that we can do with uh, embedding and de-embedding and the network operators and things like that. Okay, so now let's look at uh, maybe a little bit of network sets. So network sets are used when you have a series of networks. Uh, maybe you've taken redundant measurements of something or you're watching something vary as time or temperature uh, is changing or something like that. So I think I have some data in here. <clears throat> let's see what we got. Uh, where I thought it was. Let's, uh, here, I'll just import it from my data folder of SCURF. So I'll do RF. This is actually probably useful to look at the IO. So I can do RF dot read all. And I'm going to my uh, SCURF directory here. Okay, so I can read everything in data. So what's in data? I've got, there's a lot of stuff in the SCURF data package. So I'm just going to, uh, let's say I'm going to load everything uh, that starts with RO, which stands for uh, radiating open, which represents a waveguide just radiating into free space. So I'm going to read everything in this directory. I'm going to pass it the flag contains. So I only 
load up things that contain R, the string RL. And so this returned here a dictionary of networks. So I'll, I can store this in NS, which is short for network set. Okay. So now if I do NS on the command line, it just lists the dictionary of uh, of networks here. So each element of this dictionary is a scurf network. So then I can put this into a network set. Uh, you can do from, they've got explicit constructors. So you can do from directory or from sdict or from zip, zip uh, compressed. In any case, let's say I do that, then I get uh, just a network set returned back. So I'm using a little bit of a sloppy namespace here. So let me change that. I'll call this, uh, not dict, let's say network set dict just so it's clear that they're different. Okay, I'm going to rerun that real quick. Alrighty, so now I've got my network set. And this has a bunch of uh, properties. So you can access a network set like a list and you'll get the elements of the network set as you'd expect. But uh, let's say you want to do something like plot the mean response of the set. So you want to plot the S parameters Uh, whoops. Okay. Let's say you want to calculate the mean response. Okay, so this is right. So here we look at the network set. We access the attribute mean s. Now what that does is compute the mean scattering parameters. So it's the complex average taken over you know every frequency point, and it returns it in in the form of a network, uh, so that you can access the plotting method. So here you can do plot s db. And this would be the mean response of all the networks. So if we just did ns.plotsdb, this would show you all of them. So that's every network. And then here's the mean response here. And I'll add a label just so you can tell. That is the mean. OK. And maybe you want to do that afterwards so it's on top. OK. So that's, that's pretty nice. You can also do things uh, like compute the standard deviation of the set. So if I want to do, instead of mean s, let's say I want to do standard deviation of s. And I'll do that, plot the s magnitude. So here, the standard deviation is going to compute uh, the standard deviation stored in the s parameters uh, of the resultant network. So this will return a network here. I'll just do that explicitly. Okay, that returns a, a network. Get rid of this plot. That returns a network, but this network the S parameters are, are not S parameters. They're just values of the standard deviation of the network set. We're really just abusing the network as a container so that we can access all the plotting methods. So here, if you look at the actual S parameters, this is either just real numbers. This is just a standard deviation. So I want to plot S. You can plot S real or S mag uh, since it's positive definite. And this will show you the standard deviation of, of the network set over frequency. Uh, obviously the Y label is taken just from plot S mag, but you can change that easily. Uh, if you import matplotlib things like, uh, you can import Y label. Whoops. I think it's pyplot. Okay, we import Y label, then we can do Y label. All right, and then it, you can change the y-axis. This is not part of SCURF. That's just part of matplotlib. All righty. So another common thing is that a lot of people like to plot uncertainty bounds. So we want to plot the mean response of the network set with plus or minus some bounds. So that's accessible through a function called plot uncertainty bounds. And then it computes it for all the different you know attributes. But again, we're just going to do sdb. And then we'll look at that. Whoops, uncertainty bounds. SDB, we can type it out right. Okay, and here's, uh, this is just some warnings, not not worried about that. But okay, here you can see the mean response and then plus and minus the uncertainty in the thing uh, in magnitude. And you could do the similar thing in phase. 
Okay, and there's the mean phase response, plus or minus. And the uncertainty is one standard deviation, which you could figure out if you, you know, look at, look at the uh, doc string on this thing. Alrighty, so that's the uh, network sets. We talked about slicing networks. We talked about some basic media uh, stuff. And that's, uh, that's about all we're going to cover in this example. Hopefully you got a uh, feel for how to use SCURF and what you can do with it. And I uh, hope you enjoy using it. More information you can uh, get from the Scikit RF website, uh, scikitrf.org. Uh, this is what it looks like right here. And there's a lot of uh, documentation under docs. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, tutorials, which are kind of uh, narrative style. Then there's some just specific examples. And then obviously an API that you can get more uh, information on. So th this talk mainly went over what was described in the uh, introduction tutorial. So you can go ahead and look at that and download the notebook uh, if you want to, to uh, do it on your own computer. Anyway, hope this is helpful.